Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about cell division, right? So why do cells need to divide? Can you think of some reasons why a cell might need to divide, right? You know, when you get hurt and some of your cells die, you need to replace them. So that's one reason for cell division. Or how does a small baby become a large adult human, right? Cells have to divide to make more cells. So growth and repair are two really good reasons for cell division. Some cells divide and some cells don't. Cells that are good at division include epithelial cells like in your skin or hepatocytes in your liver or the smooth muscle cells that are found in the walls of your hollow organs like blood vessels and intestines. Stem cells, you've probably heard of stem cells, they're really good at cell division. That's one of their main job descriptions is that they have to be able to divide to make more cells. But some cells don't divide because of the differentiation process. So differentiation is the process of a cell becoming specialized for a particular function. During the process of differentiation, genetic changes occur that often prevent the cell from dividing. Basically, the cell goes all in to the new job. It says, all right, I'm going to be a red blood cell and I'll never be anything else. So I don't even need the machinery for cell division because I'm just going to be a red blood cell and that's it. We call these terminally differentiated cells. So these include our mature bone cells, our mature skeletal muscle and cardiac cells, our mature red blood cells, neurons, gametes like eggs and sperm. All of those are examples of cells that don't divide. So I want to talk about somatic cells versus germ cells. Almost all the cells in your body are somatic cells. Somatic means body cells. The only cells in your body that are germ cells are the cells that are destined to become or already are gametes, eggs and sperm. Okay. Somatic cells divide through a process called mitosis. Um, and the job of mitosis is to clone cells. So you take an epithelial cell and it undergoes mitosis, and at the end you have two epithelial cells, and they are exactly like one another, and they look exactly like the starting cell, right? You're cloning cells. If we're going to make eggs and sperm, these germ cells, right, we want eggs and sperm to be genetically unique, and that requires a different process called meiosis. Not only do we want the cells to be genetically unique, but they also need to contain half the amount of DNA, and we call that haploid. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on osmosis. At the end of this video, I'll review meiosis a little bit, but we're going to spend most of our time talking about somatic cell division, in other words, mitosis. So before a somatic cell can divide, it's in a phase called interphase. So interphase is just when the cell is kind of being its normal cell self. It's doing whatever its job is. During the process of interphase, if the cell plans to divide, it must copy its DNA exactly. So during interphase, the DNA is replicated. This is also known as copying chromosomes because don't forget DNA is basically a chromosome, right? So we have to copy the DNA exactly. So don't forget a typical cell contains 46 chromosomes. So if before replication of DNA, it has 46 chromosomes or 46 pieces of DNA, how many chromosomes will it have after replication. If you said 92, you were correct. So during interphase, we're going to double all of our DNA. The next part of cell division is called mitosis. So during mitosis, we're basically going to take those replicated chromosomes and split them into two equal portions, right? So we take those 92 chromosomes and separate them into two equal halves of 46 and 46. This process is then followed by cytokinesis. Cytokinesis means to move the cytoplasm. So basically we take everything in the cytoplasm and divide that up too. Put two mitochondria over here and two mitochondria over there and put a Golgi apparatus here and a Golgi apparatus there. We split everything in the cell in half. At the end of cytokinesis, the cell membrane splits so that we have two entirely separate cells. These are called daughter cells. So at the end of mitosis, you have two identical daughter cells. They're identical to one another, and they're identical to the cell that started this process. 
Mitosis has certain phases to it. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay. Prophase is the first phase of mitosis. And it's when the cell is being proactive and getting ready to divide. It's doing things like breaking down its nuclear envelope so that the chromosomes can move around appropriately. Meta means middle. So metaphase is called met meta or middle phase because the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. You take all those 92 chromosomes, line them up in the middle so you can split them in half. Ana means back. So during anaphase, the chromosomes get pulled back to opposite sides of the cell separating the chromosomes into those two equal groups. Telo means end. So the telophase is the end of mitosis, where the chromosomes, they've already been separated into two groups. Now they just kind of start to loosen up and make themselves at home. During telophase, cytokinesis is occurring too. So those two things kind of happen simultaneously. So for a summary of somatic cell division, we first start with interphase. During interphase, it's really important that the DNA gets replicated. Then the cell goes into mitosis. During mitosis, the DNA is split up into two even groups. And then we have cytokinesis, where the cell is physically split in half. Now, don't forget the whole point of somatic cell division is to create clones, or exact copies of the starting cell. Before mitosis begins, there's one cell. And at the end of mitosis and cytokinesis, there are two total cells, each identical to one another and identical to the cell that started the process along. When we talk about cell division, we have to talk about tumors and cancer. Ex excessive cell division, excessive mitosis, too much mitosis, may lead to tumors. Tumors are also known as neoplasms. A tumor is just an enlarged mass of cells exhibiting abnormal growth and division, and usually the cells themselves are abnormal. Tumor does not mean cancer. Benign tumors are not harmful, and almost all of us have benign tumors. Malignant tumors are the bad ones. Malignant tumors can be invasive, meaning they're pressing into other tissues, causing other organs to malfunction, or they're, they metastasize. And to metastasize means that the malignant tumor is shedding cells and the cells are traveling through a body fluid to a new location where then they start to replicate and grow a secondary tumor. Malignant tumors are cancerous. To be considered cancer, we have uncontrolled, unrestricted, unrestrained cell division occurring. And this is having a deleterious or bad effect on the body. Can someone have cancer without having a tumor? Can you think of an example of a cancer that does not involve a tumor? There are examples of this, including leukemia, right? With leukemia, people have excessive white blood cells, but they're not in clumps, right? They're in the bone marrow and in the bloodstream. So cancer is actually caused by damage or mutations in genes. So cancer is always caused by a problem with genes. All cancer is genetic. Do you inherit these genes already damaged from your parents? Or do genes become damaged later in your life? Or is it both possible? Right? If you said both are possible, you're correct. You can inherit already damaged genes. Or you can inherit perfectly fine genes that can become damaged by things called carcinogens, which are cancer-causing agents. So would you say that cancer is caused by the environment or genetics or both? Again, if you said both, you're correct. Now, normally cell division, aka mitosis, is very carefully regulated by proteins. Right? The problem of cancer comes into play when the proteins that are supposed to be regulating cell division are not working or they're missing. Why would these proteins be not working or missing? Well, don't forget, proteins are coded for by genes. And if we have mutations in the genes for the proteins that are supposed to be regulating cell division, then that's how we get cancer. Okay. So basically, when the genes for these regulatory proteins are mutated, the cell division can occur even when it should not. And then the cell division goes on unrestrained and unchecked, resulting in cancer. 
So at the bottom of the screen, we can see a little representative of a cell, right? Let's say this cell wants to undergo mitosis, so it does, and now we have two cells, right? But let's say the top cell is hit with a carcinogen. So now it has genes that are going to be mutated, and now it's just not right, okay? So we have these regulatory proteins that have two choices. These proteins can either repair the DNA, fix the cell, and then let it go on. But sometimes the DNA is so badly messed up that repair is not possible. And then we only have one choice, and that's apoptosis. So these regulatory proteins can initiate apoptosis, which is essentially cell suicide. The cell will die so that it doesn't poison the rest of the body, so to speak. The problem of cancer comes into play when the proteins that are repairing the DNA or initiating the apoptosis are broken or missing, right? So if there's no protein there to repair the DNA or no protein there to cause the apoptosis, then we only have one choice and that's the cell will go on and replicate even with its damaged DNA. So now one damaged cell becomes two damaged cells, and two damaged cells become four, and four become eight, until we get this pile of messed up cells forming this tumor, and that's how cancer is formed. You might have heard of some of these genes and their protein products that are used to regulate the cell cycle. P53 is a very common uh, protein that regulates the cell cycle, and when its gene is damaged, um, we get tumor formation. BRCA1 is another one people have heard of. This gene produces a protein that also regulates mitosis, and when that gene is mutated, it can result specifically in breast cancer. So, so far we've been talking about somatic cell division, right? Somatic cell division creates clones of cells, and this is good for some things. When you lose skin cells, you want to replace skin cells with more skin cells, so cloning is good there. When you know, liver cells die, you want to replace liver cells with more liver cells. So mitosis is a good thing there. But sometimes cell cloning is bad. It's bad for evolution because evolution requires diversity. So when germ cells divide to make gametes like eggs and sperm, we want the end products to be genetically unique. And that's not something that mitosis can do. Um, so what drives evolution is this genetic diversity and this is created through a process called meiosis, right? So with meiosis, we take a cell and at the end, we end up with four cells instead of two. And those four cells actually have half the amount of DNA as the standard cell. So if the starting cell had 46 pieces of DNA, the ending cells, the daughter cells, if you will, each have 23 pieces of DNA. So these ending cells are like eggs and sperm. Right? And it's important that an egg has 23 pieces of DNA. And it's important that a sperm has 23 pieces of DNA. Because when the sperm meets the egg, 23 plus 23 will give us 46, which is what we need to have a human cell. So the process of meiosis cuts the amount of DNA in half. We call that haploid. But during the process of meiosis, there's a lot of shuffling of genes that occurs too. And this creates the genetic diversity that is necessary. Um, this is again what drives evolution. And this is why you are not identical to your siblings or identical to your parents is because of this gene shuffling that occurs during the process of meiosis.